So this has been a long time coming, but after a good conversation I have with my wife, I've decided to confess about something that, uh, you know, it's been taking years for me to share with, especially on camera, and uh, I wanted to do it today. And the truth of the matter is, I used to, in the past, be a BlackBerry user. I was. In the past, I used to use BlackBerry phones, and it was a Nextel BlackBerry phone, the 7100i, if you remember the way it was with the walkie-talkie on the side. And then one day, one day, a prophet came into my office and told me about this special phone called the iPhone. And I wasn't a believer at first, right? And I started looking into it, and eventually I became an iPhone user. My life completely changed. You know, I just bought into this idea of what this iPhone is. I couldn't see myself using any other phones. But unfortunately, what I've learned with age is that not everybody's perfect. I see a lot of people nowadays that use this one phone. It's called the, the Andy, the uh, Andrea, the, uh, Android. the Android. They use this phone called the Android. And there's another one that's coming. Every time I see it, I feel like I'm watching Zach Morris from Saved by the Bell. There's these big phones, you know, with Samsung, right? It looks like a big old, big old uh, flat screen TV, you know. He, by the way, just so you know, when you take that phone out to answer the phone in the elevator, people are thinking you're taking out a flat screen TV. You know, you kind of look like a smaller version of Flavor Flav uh, when you take that out. But on a serious note, today, Friday, September 20th, 2013, Apple is launching their new phone, the iPhone 5S. And I believe the iPhone 5C and millions of people worldwide will be running to a store to order their new phones. And you may say, I won't be doing that. That's fine. They're okay with that because tens of millions of people will. And they're going to generate profits based on that. But the real question is this. Why have they been able to do this? You see, there are 10 languages that I always talk about, the 10 languages that the visionaries, the great ones speak. Apple's done a phenomenal job with two of those languages. One of them is the dream language. It's inspiring you and I to think different. It's to understand that the one thing Apple wants to be known as is they want to be known as we are not like anybody else. I want you to watch this short clip of a commercial they did recently. Here's to the crazy ones, the rebels, the troublemakers, the ones who see things differently. How does that small skip make you feel like? Doesn't it make you feel like just wanting to be different? You see, with Apple, you are different. You're not like everybody else. Their users feel different. The second language that they speak impeccably well, better than their competitors, is the crusade and the cause language. Watch this commercial they did back in 1984. We shall prevail. On January 24th, Apple Computer will introduce Macintosh. So you just watch these two videos by Apple, one on Dream, one on Crusade. And what Apple teaches us, that social capital cannot be bought with all the money in the world. Even though their competitors will say, we offer more products, we'll do this, we'll raise money to create your kind of a culture. Apple will say, you don't understand and feel and believe what Dream, what thinking different, what Crusade is all about. So while publicly... Many of their competitors will criticize them for their cult-like following. Secretly, all so many competitors envy the culture that they've created. That's my message of the week to you.